What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2020 Ford Escape Hybrid. Huge thanks to Ford for providing me here with the all new Escape to review for you guys today. So about the 2020 Escape. So yes, it is an entirely new generation of the Escape here and uh, you know, it has a lot of structural changes. It's about 200 pounds lighter for a standard Escape uh, over the old uh, generation. And so one new thing here is the hybrid version, which hasn't been around since 2012 on the first generation Escape. And uh, so it's great to have the hybrid version back. Um, you know, they just had such a good reputation for that previous generation version uh, back in the day. And uh, so it's uh, great to see this joining the fray of other compact SUV competitors with a hybrid. And so anyway, as far as the looks here on the new Escape, I think it's pretty good. I just don't think it's very distinctive personally. Um, you know, whenever you look at this, it doesn't immediately strike me as being a Ford Escape or a Ford in general for that matter. But I think it's a good look nonetheless. You know, you have a nice prominent grill there, these very large headlights that here in the titanium version have these uh, LED projectors that look very sharp. And uh, you know, you have some LED fog lamps there in the lower part of the front bumper and uh, overall it's a very low look too you know this is a much more car like look than what you get with stuff like the Toyota RAV4 or even the Honda CRV honestly and I think you have a little less ground clearance than stuff like the RAV4 as well but uh, it means this is a more car like SUV in its appearance and in its seating position and the way it drives which I'll get to more in a second um, but anyway it looks good up front on the sides here you have these 19 inch wheels on the titanium version which are attractive uh, also the side profile here in the Escape I think is actually pretty nice I think it's one of my favorite angles here is the side profile it's um, a little bit sportier looking with this very slender front end in comparison with the back end there but then going out to the back um, I think it also looks pretty good you know you have some pretty simple taillights there but they're attractive and unoffensive uh, you have the escapes uh, badging there uh, which is kind of a new take on that which is a cool look and uh, overall there's nothing to complain about here with the um, you know styling of the new escape I think it's very good and I think most people are going to like it a good bit but personally it doesn't excite me or evoke as much emotion in me as some of the other competing SUV designs. All right, so start up and go for a drive. The Escape here has the standard Ford key. It's a really nice key. It's a little bit on the thick side. Has some metal type buttons there on the back, but actually, you know, pretty nice key as long as you don't mind that it's a little bit chunky. Uh, but anyway, of course, here in the Titanium, it's keyless access, keyless entry, and push button start. So you just leave the key in your pocket and hit the engine start button. But the start button, I have to note real quickly, is kind of on the side of uh, the dashboard here. So you have to do like a sideways push instead of a forward push, uh, just kind of an odd placement for the engine start button but anyway you hit that and it starts right up and if you're curious to hear about the interior here in the all new escape my wife and I actually did a full in-depth interior review on this vehicle so you can go watch that I will link it above uh, but overall uh, the interior here is interesting so it does some things better than a lot of the competitors do uh, but there's a couple other areas where this isn't quite as nice as some of the competition with a few missing features um, here in this fully loaded version but overall I really like the light color of this interior and uh, combined with you know the wood you have the wood looking plastic I should say um, it all looks pretty nice and pretty attractive all right so setting off here in the 2020 Ford Escape hybrid uh, so the first thing you might notice the engine is running but usually whenever you're at low speeds the engine does not run I've just been doing a bunch of idling to film this interior and so it drained the small battery here in the regular hybrid escape and so that's why the engines running more than it usually does but uh, usually you'll be driving silently here at low speeds which is very cool cool uh, especially if you've never you know had any experience with a hybrid before other things to note as we're going down a hill here one thing that jumps out at me is the brake pedal it's a little tricky to be smooth here in the hybrid it has a magnetic type feeling to the brake pedal where um, the braking force increases quickly exponentially um, whenever you start leaning on the brakes and so it can be a little bit jerky uh, if you're not used to it and even me after driving this vehicle for a week already it still is a little tricky I have to focus on being smooth with my brake brakes in order to you know not be super jerky whenever I'm coming to a stop so I wish the brakes were a little easier to modulate and that's not just a hybrid thing either both the RAV4 hybrid and the uh, CRV hybrid have easier to modulate brakes that I haven't had any trouble being smooth with the braking one other little thing I noticed uh, whenever you are starting from a stop is that sometimes it can be a little bit aggressive with its engagement it feels like there's like a clutch pack engaging um, 
whenever you're switching over from either the, the electric mode to the gas or whatever's going on but even whenever you're trying to gently accelerate there are some times where it gave me a little bit of a jolt and it was like just a little bit unrefined I was expecting a little bit more polish there because that's again you don't feel any kind of noticeable shift from electric mode to gas mode and the other competing uh, crossovers and so it's kind of weird that with this it's a little more obvious you hear the electric motors a little bit more they're a little louder in this than they are in the competing SUVs and so you know that it just you're a little more aware of the fact that you're in a hybrid here which is something that you know I think the others mask a little bit better um, and it's just a little bit smoother than all the others so I do wish you know between the tricky uh, you know uh, brake pedal which isn't super smooth and then the acceleration which can be a little bit jarring from a stop at times uh, I just wish there was a little more refinement at low speeds here with the escape and it was just a little bit easier to drive smoothly throttle response though is uh, a little bit on the relaxed side here at least in normal mode but this is a family crossover and a hybrid one at that so I'm not expecting anything sporty honestly um, but you know you just have to be a little more deliberate with your throttle inputs but totally fine very responsive uh, you know whenever you do put your foot into it other things to note here visibility in the escape um, I would say is on the lower end of the spectrum it's certainly not as good as something like a super Forester, which feels like you're sitting on the front of the hood with how good the visibility is in that um, and even some of the other stuff like CRV uh, and things like that are a little bit better the main objection I have is you have an a pillar and then you also have this other chunky block here right by your side view mirror and so that all combines to make a little bit of a larger area there I mean you are sitting up a little bit higher here in the escape but just you know for visibility isn't quite as good it's still plenty good you know and uh, family crossovers are all gonna be much better than even a lot of sedans and stuff because you're sitting up higher but that's just one thing to note rear visibility though is great so no complaints there but as far as sitting position goes I am noticing that you're sitting a little bit lower in this than I think you do in the RAV4 and even the CRV it's a little bit more of a car like feeling to the driving experience in here than what it is in the RAV4 which is a little bit more of an actual SUV in the way that it drives but I'm going to go ahead and put it up into the sport mode, which has these very long animations. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I wish that, I mean, it still will show you your speedometer regardless of, you know, what mode you're in and how it's changing over. But I wish that was a little quicker with its transition. But anyway, let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does. And here we go. Okay, so it's not fast not even really punchy it's adequate that's how I would describe the acceleration here in the escape it's you know I mean it's okay it's just the fact that the electric motors in this don't seem to be as strong as they are in the RAV4 and the CRV hybrids and so you don't get a ton of electric punch you get a little bit of electric punch but then there's like this lull and you gotta wait for the engine to rev up and then it starts pushing you forward it actually is a very disconnected experience unfortunately and I wish that it was a little bit quicker and a little bit more immediate but it isn't. So it's kind of a contrast because in the RAV4 and the CRV, I mean, you get a, a pretty decent amount of punch. Now, this is down on power. Uh, this is, ha, runs a two and a half liter Atkinson cycle, nationally aspirated four cylinder engine, does 200 horsepower and then 155 pound feet of torque. And that's combined for the electric motors and the gas engine all together. And so that makes it the least powerful out of those three that I'm you know, talking about here. And uh, torque is the one that's way down with, I mean, like the CRV hybrid has like, I think almost a, I like 90, extra pound feet of torque over this and so that's what you're really going to feel behind the wheel because that torque is what gets you up and going um, and so that's where this feels a little less punchy now as far as passing power and things like that you know I have driven this on the highway plenty already and passing power is fine so that's not really an issue because with that you're only down maybe a dozen horsepower over stuff like the RAV4 and the uh, CRV hybrid so passing power is going to be fine it's just when you're starting from a stop where you're going to notice this is going to be a little bit slower than the other uh, computer Competing vehicles. Uh, 0 to 60 time is also a little bit slower. Um, this runs a 7.7 .7 seconds 0 to 60 versus uh, about 7.3 for the RAV4 and I think somewhere around there for the CRV hybrid as well. It runs it all through a CVT transmission so with those electric motors and stuff it's kind of complicated how the transmission works but uh, it's a CVT type feeling. Anyway we're going around some corners here in the Escape hybrid and um, this is where I think the Escape really shines because yes you don't have quite the same SUV type uh, you know sitting position as you get in the, the other competing you know compact SUVs in this segment but man it really handles itself very well these 19 inch wheels titanium probably help as well um, but uh, 
it's very flat. Um, there's less lean than I think you get in the RAV4. It's a sharper, more connected driving experience. I'm feeling a little bit more steering feel and weight through the steering wheel here than I did in um, the RAV4, which has really light steering. And I wish that I was a little heavier in that, uh, at least around corners and stuff. This nicely loads up whenever you're going into a corner. Brakes also, whenever you're up at higher speeds here, are very responsive. It's mostly just the brakes are a little tricky whenever you're coming to a stop at low speeds, but up at higher speeds here, they feel really nice. It feels pretty good in corners, honestly. Now, this I think the Mazda CX-5, which doesn't have a hybrid version, but that um, is still gonna be the better handling crossover. I think that's still the best one in this segment. Um, but aside from that, I think this is towards the top of the pack as far as handling, um, and handles itself very good. Now, it doesn't handle as good as a car. I think a Ford Fusion, for example, still handles better than this, but this is, uh, you know, like I said, very good for a compact crossover. Curb weight for the Escape here, by the way, is around 3,700 pounds. Ford quotes it for this hybrid titanium um, just like at 3,712, but car and driver got closer, almost 3,800 pounds. I think they were like 3,781 or 91, something around there. So somewhere in the 3,700 pound range, um, but Escapes, all these uh, next-gen Escapes here, at least, you know, for the normal gas versions, are about 200 pounds lighter than the previous generation. So that's how you're going to have better hand than you know a normal escape from the previous generation obviously the hybrid here adds the electric motors and the batteries so that's how this you know creeps up in weight over you know, the previous generation escape which didn't have all that stuff added in but now just cruising around at you know normal speeds just you know following along with traffic and whatnot the escape is a really nice cruiser now one thing that I noticed especially on the highway is there seems to be more road noise in this than what I remember in um, at least the CRV hybrid the RAV4 might be pretty similar but uh, my wife and I just both noticed it was kind of noisy in here on the highway. And I just noticed, you know, you're hearing a lot of road noise and wind noise and all that kind of stuff here in the Escape. Uh, but again, the RAV4 I don't think is really any better. And so I guess that's just par for the course in this price category in this segment. But once again, uh, the Mazda CX-5, which does not have a hybrid version, is still the king in the refinement. That is much quieter, uh, much more solid feel. And so that is definitely the one to pick if you're not worried about the hybrid thing. But now we're in normal mode. And it still is very responsive with its acceleration. And from getting from point A to point B, it's going to be plenty punchy. And, uh, you know, you're just going to get such good fuel economy. That's the whole appeal here with the hybrid version. If you do want a punchier option for the Escape, you can get the uh, two-liter four-cylinder turbo in the regular titanium for the non-hybrid versions. And that'll give you, you know, I think close to 250 horsepower in that version. And that's going to be really punchy for this segment of vehicle. That's right towards the top of the class as far as horsepower goes. So that's going to be the one to pick if you're looking at that kind of stuff. If you do really want the electrification component, there's also the plug-in hybrid escape that you can get, which has about 30 miles of electric only range, much more powerful electric motors. Um, but that's still, now that adds a little bit more horsepower than what you get here on the regular hybrid, but it still is down on power compared with the RAV4 Prime, which I just reviewed and was very impressed with. That thing is actually really hilariously quick for what it is uh, with its 300 horsepower. So plug-in hybrids, as far as those go, you know, if you are wanting the electrified thing, you can have that here in the Escape, and that'll give you a little bit of extra power. Although, the unfortunate thing with the plug-in hybrid version of the Escape is that you don't have uh, any all-wheel drive option. With the plug-in hybrid Escape, it's front-wheel drive only, um, versus in the RAV4 Prime, that's all-wheel drive only for its plug-in hybrid version. So, you know, it's kind of a, not a direct comparison with those, since, you know, the RAV4 has a little bit of a different offering. But I do wish they would have a plug-in hybrid version of the Escape here with all-wheel drive. That would be nice and I think something a lot of people would still go for since I would imagine that most escape buyers probably do want all-wheel drive unless you live in a sunny place that never sees any kind of snow or any kind of cold temperatures. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, otherwise the Escape is a very nice thing to drive. Like I said, it's, uh, you know, this road though is a little bit rougher and so you might be able to hear some of that road noise. It's a little bit more defined. You know, you're probably not going to pay too much attention to it, but it just, as a reviewer who's in a lot of vehicles, that is one thing that stands out. It is kind of cool, though, how with the gauge cluster here, you know, there isn't a tack, you know, there isn't any kind of just straight up, like, here's what your engine RPM is, but it always has this little thing showing you how much battery power it's uh, contributing and how much uh, the engine is contributing to your forward momentum. And uh, obviously, whenever you get off the gas, it'll deaccelerate for you and show you how much of the energy it's recuperating um, through that slowing down process. And this also does have this hill assist uh, function, which isn't like a hill holder, but what this does is whenever you're going 
going down hills, it'll maximize its regeneration and uh, hold you at whatever speed you're at. So if you're going 40 miles an hour down a hill, uh, instead of in a normal vehicle with an automatic where you know you just kind of would coast and gain speed and have to use the brakes, in this you can not use the brakes, then it'll hold that 40 miles per hour all the way down the hill. I mean, it'll vary, you know, one to two miles per hour back and forth, but basically it'll hold you at that, um, which is great because that maximizes your fuel economy and stuff. Um, but if you don't like that, you can turn off that feature. But I kind of found it to be pretty cool. And if you want it to coast a little bit quicker going down the hill, you can always just tap the gas lightly and, you know, that will uh, bring up your speed a little bit. But uh, I thought that was really cool. But I also just, you know, I do like seeing, you know, what is doing what here in the gauge cluster. Now you can also go over here to your apps in the SYNC 3 system and there's a power flow. And that'll give you a very pretty animation of you know where the power is going, what's going on with all that. And so that's a very cool thing to have there. But I think Ford has done a really good job of making all the hybrid stuff very digestible. And if you don't care about hypermiling and you just want to drive this like a normal SUV and you just want to you know get better fuel economy, I think this is still going to be set up very well. So it's very easy to understand it's not intimidating for anyone that's new to hybrids or anything like that and uh, I really like the way they did this there's a couple other little cool things that they do in this that the RAV4 and the CRV I don't think do first I love how um, the trip view here in the gauge cluster will actually show you how many electric miles you've driven out of your total uh, you know amount of mileage for your trip uh, that you're recording and so um, you know for example I've driven 105 miles here in my week with the escape hybrid and out of that 105 miles 46.6 of them were electric miles. So that really helps, especially around here. We have a lot of hills. And so when you're going down all those hills, that engine just turns off and you have just the battery charging up there. And so uh, it's really cool that, you know, almost half of my miles were done without the engine even being on, which is uh, just, it's, it's just cool. I don't know, I find hybrid stuff fascinating. You know, what's the point of having the engine on if you're, you know, not needing it? And so I think this is fantastic. You can get much better fuel economy as a result. So. Uh, uh, the Escape Hybrid, speaking of fuel economy, um, has some pretty good fuel economy ratings. It's uh, kind of best in class in some areas and slightly under best in class in others, but either way, it's towards the top of the pack as far as fuel economy between these three uh, compact SUV hybrids goes. So it's rated at 43 miles per gallon in the city, 37 on the highway, and 40 combined. And so, uh, in my you know 105 miles of driving here, now before, I, now it's a little bit lower, but that's because I've been doing a lot of idling to film the interior. Uh, but before I did all that idling, so I'd say my first uh, maybe 95 miles, I was getting a 40 miles per gallon exactly. So I was getting that combined number, um, which is very impressive that it's doing that very easily. And I did do a little bit of highway driving. I'd say maybe 15 to 20% of my driving was on the highway. Uh, but most, most of that was on you know the city, you know, kind of just suburban back roads here, stop and go on, you know, stuff like that. And so, you know, in the case of a hybrid, you actually get better fuel economy if you do more city driving. And so that's why I think I'm seeing that 40 MPG number very easily. And while I have been trying to hypermile it a little bit, I have been doing some accelerations, merging onto the highway, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I haven't been driving this vehicle like a grandma the entire week. And so to be still getting that combined number, I think is very impressive and leads me to believe that in the real world over a long time ownership experience with the Escape Hybrid, you'd most likely beat those fuel economy estimates, even if it's just by a little bit. And so 40 MPG, I'm pretty happy with. Now I will say, now I haven't spent a week with a RAV4 hybrid, so I can't give you that number, um, and my driving isn't identical anyway, but I did uh, spend a day with a CRV hybrid recently, and uh, in that I remember um, getting pretty high 40 MPGs. Uh, one of the other people on the press drive I was on was getting uh, actually a slightly over 50 MPG when they were really taking it easy. Uh, obviously, your mileage will vary. It depends on the type of area you live in, also your driving style, all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I'll just be curious. I'll be spending some time with a CRV hybrid for a week here very soon, seeing if it can beat this or not. But I still think no matter what, you're getting 40 miles of the gallon in an SUV, which has lots of space, a nice, nice high driving position, the all wheel drive, all weather capability, all that kind of stuff. To be getting 40 miles per gallon, I don't know why anyone would buy a non-hybrid Escape. I mean, unless you just want the extra power, um, you know, with that two liter turbo motor, 
then I can understand, okay, if you're a speed demon, but if you're a speed demon, I don't know why you're buying an escape in the first place. But if that's the appeal, then, you know, I can understand that. But otherwise, if you're just a normal commuter, 100%, I think it's worth going for the hybrid. I don't know, I think it's kind of cool to maximize your efficiency, not have a gas engine running when you don't need it, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, the last thing to mention here is the pricing in the uh, escape titanium. So that's where uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. It comes down to what features you value, because this one has tested this fully loaded titanium, um, which also has this like extra premium package on top of that, which gives you the panoramic moonroof. It gives you the heads up display too, which is nice, but I'm not crazy about them. So I could totally do without that. But this panoramic roof is really nice. Anyway, regardless, this one is uh, just under $38,000 as tested. And so at that price point, um, you know, it is a little bit on the high side, but it's pretty much right in line with most of the uh, competitors. I think the CRV hybrid undercuts this by a little bit, uh, but you know, com comparing it to a RAV4 hybrid, it's pretty similar. Now, the interesting thing with a RAV4 hybrid that's fully loaded, those you do get cooled seats, which you don't have here in this, you know, you only have the heated seats. So there's, you know, a couple small differences like that. If cooled seats are a must have thing, just note that you don't get that here in the Escape. You might be, uh, you know, more interested in the RAV4 because the CRV hybrid, even in its top touring trip, does not have uh, cooled seats either. So you only get the heated seats. And so, yes, I mean, $38,000 is kind of high for something like this. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I think it's worth it for the hybrid component, which I think is really cool. One other thing to mention here about the Escape Hybrid is the safety technology in it. So it has Ford's Copilot 360 system, um, which gives you all the basic stuff. So you have automatic emergency braking, you have blind spot monitoring, um, reverse automatic braking, you know, all those types of things it has bundled in here. And it also does have a lane keep assist system. And um, it's either you can have an aid or you can have an alert or you can have both, uh, but you can't have none of them. So there is no way to completely defeat that. And so even whenever I've been drive around here in my week of driving uh, you know if I'm trying to take a corner a little bit closer to the shoulder or something it will kind of nudge the steering wheel now you can't turn down the sensitivity of that and how much it assists you so I did have that on the lowest setting and it wasn't as annoying as like Subaru their eyesight system that thing like constantly wants to steer for you and it's constantly nudging at the wheel that drove me crazy and would actually be a deal breaker the Ford system is not a deal breaker um, it seems to be a little less obtrusive I wasn't annoyed with it it was just like oh that's Weird. It's kind of nudging me every once in a while, but it wasn't as active, and so I really appreciated that. I think I definitely prefer Ford Safety Tech over Subarus, that is for sure. But again, Subaru doesn't even offer a hybrid version of the Forester, so um, not really worth mentioning. But I will say that the RAV4 and the CRV both have less intense safety systems in those vehicles, and they don't try and steer for you. They do have, you know, the adaptive cruise like this does, which has the lane keeping assist if you want it, um, and this has that as well. Well, and it worked very well in my time of you know using it uh, but just note that this is going to not let you turn everything off like Honda and Toyota do and so if you're someone who likes to do all your own driving and you don't like you know your steering wheel being nudged uh, then I would just say that both the Honda and Toyota might be a little bit of a better choice in that regard but again this is not a deal breaker in this they did a pretty good job of setting it up I just wish there was still an option to turn it off one cool safety feature the escape does have that neither of the competitors have is it has this auto park assist which is what you might see in a lot of the Ford commercials where it'll parallel park itself and it'll you know perpendicular park itself as well um, but it's very picky with the conditions in which it will do that I tried doing it on what was a relatively flat just normal parking lot it was totally empty I tried activating it and it gave me a warning message saying that it couldn't do it and uh, it said something about like the inclination wasn't good um, but it was not like I was parallel parking on a hill in San Francisco or something like it was just a pretty flat parking lot I'm not sure why it wasn't able to do the auto park assist there so just keep in mind that yes it has that feature how well it works you know it still takes a little bit of time to even find a spot and stuff and then it'll often just be like nope I'm not doing it so you know you can't depend on it or anything like that um, so it's a cool toy maybe it's a cool party trick to show off to your friends and family and stuff but um, you know I wouldn't base a purchase on that alone even though that feature does look very cool in the commercials um, and if it does have to work then it could be very handy um, but I haven't found it very useful in my time of driving but yeah so anyway let me know your thoughts on the escape hybrid here in the comments below huge thanks to Ford for providing me here with this escape to review for you guys today anyway I'll see you guys in the next one thank you very much for watching take care